Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ number 79, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. And this week, got a lot of topics or a lot of questions revolving around some fixed blades for self-defense. So let's get right into it. Do, do, do. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in for this episode. As you can tell, I'm a little hoarse right now. I've been out a few days uh, with a bit of a cold, but all is better now. Uh, in the meantime, if you are new to this series, what you do is if you have a question you would like to have featured in a future episode, leave it in the comments section below and there's a chance it'll get picked for one of those future episodes. Uh, we go through, pick out some fun ones. This week, first question comes from Ray Roberts, who says, I work as a sheriff's deputy and was looking for a small fixed blade to be carried primarily for self-defense and would need to be carried in the cargo pants pocket. Is there any small fixed blades out there that has a deep carry sheath and can be carried securely as well as comfortably? So immediately what I thought of is Benchmade's SOCP dagger series. Uh, it says dagger, but it's not a, a double edge. This is a single edged knife right here. There you go. It's made out of 440C. It's a single integral piece. Uh, comes in about 112 bucks for this full size version. And the sheath is designed or can be used for pocket carry thanks to the clip right here. It can also be carried inside the waistband or other areas. You do have some of the ring sticking up out from the, uh, the deep carry part of that pocket clip, but you want, do want to be able to access it. Now, overall length of the sheathed package right here is, uh, I'd say about seven, seven and a half inches right there. So if that's too large, there's a smaller version of this SOCP that is a little more compact. That has about a, uh, I believe it's about a two inch blade or a two and a quarter inch blade, whereas this has a three and a quarter inch blade for the full sized version. Uh, and this is the partially serrated version, but you can get it without serrations too, if you like. But it's really fast to access, you know, finger in the ring, pull out, you're ready to go. Feels solid, you got that very acute point right there. And since this is primarily a self-defense item for you, it definitely fills the bill there, but you could do, you know, some box opening stuff like that day to day. It's certainly still a useful knife overall. Check that guy out. I think that would be a very good option for you. All right, next question comes from Tassos Zacharias. Hello, DCA. I like trail running and then hiking and doing bushcraft. I'm looking for a lightweight fixed blade to carry on my running hydration packs strap in order to be able to quick draw. Self-defense is my first priority, but I want to use it also for some bushcraft work. Is a dagger style blade a good option? Any suggestions about running a knife carry in general? Thanks. This is why I like, uh, you know, any, any given topic really, you know, I, I talked in the beginning, we're just talking about self-defense fixed blades, but there's never one answer. Everyone's got their own set of circumstances and needs. This answer is gonna be very different from the first one. Uh, and the first thing that came to mind, I'm trying very hard for the recommendation to not be a Mora, such as the Bushcraft Black. I mean, that's like tactical and bushcraft combined through and through. That's the guy right there. But I wanted to, to do something a little bit different. Something I don't show as much, but it's a shame because it's a really cool knife. The Cold Steel Peacemaker, uh, the Peacemaker 3 right here with a four inch blade of 4116 steel, about 25 bucks for this and weight 3.4 ounces, not counting the sheath. So quite lightweight. It's a really cool little blade. You've got a Scandi grind. Your bushcraft stuff is gonna be great there. And you've got that scalloped front end that you see on something like the Mora 2000 or the Mora Cans Bowl, which certainly makes the tip a little more acute for the piercing things. You've got a rubber over molded handle with guards on the front and the back. So you've got the retention there. And the sheath system, I wasn't necessarily thinking about uh, when, when you talk about having on your strap for quick draw, you probably want inverted carry. And this does have a, a clip on this particular knife. So you might have to come up with something a little more inventive for that. There are a lot of fixed blades, especially if you've got, you know, like molly webbing on your, your pack strap right there that could be much more easily attached, but things get more expensive and more heavy 
when you get into some of that realm. So I tried to keep it on the lightweight side of things because if you're running, ounces add up to pounds, pounds equal pain, you know, you know the old adage. Um, so that's why I went with this. You might have to get a little creative, like I mentioned, but a really solid knife that really fits that cross section of needs. If you want something bigger, if you want more than a four inch blade, you can get the Peacemaker 2 with a five and a half inch blade. Broader top to bottom as well, or a spine to edge, I should say. Weight on this one, uh, you add about two ounces on the knife itself, and of course the sheath, you're gonna add a little bit more on that front as well. But really solid feeling knives and definitely up to your challenge. All right, Craig Wasak, uh, DCA, love the content and could use your help. I'm looking for an everyday running knife. Again, answer is gonna be very different because everyone's situation is a little different, even though these are both running type of knives. Uh, I will go on runs from five to 10 miles in somewhat rural areas and looking for a knife to take along for basic utility, such as opening protein pouches and basic protection if needed, i.e. coyotes or other rare wildlife run-ins. Uh, criteria, no neck knives, they bang around too much, must have a clip of some sort, can be fixed or folder, prefer smaller, definitely lightweight, prefer cheaper, but willing to go up to 100 bucks. Bonus points if they're sweat proof. All right, um, check out the K-Bar TDI for a fixed blade option. About, uh, about 49 bucks for these. Uh, steel is Aus 8, which interestingly enough, Aus 8 is a stainless steel. It's not the most stainless steel in the world, but you do have a black traction coating here to kind of keep, or make that less of a concern, I, I should say. And I think this works really well for you. The sheath does have a clip. It has K-Bar's TDI clip right there. Clicks into the sheath quite nicely. And the reason I like this particular angled blade for this situation specifically is you, like me and like most people who carry knives, even most people who carry knives that think in the back of their head, hey, we might have to use this for self-defense. None of us have training, right? <laughs> yes, some of you out there do have training. I'm not trying to say you know, anything against you, but by and large, we don't actually know what we're doing. And what's nice about the TDI is you grab the handle in the sheath, pull it, you don't have to change positions. And because of that forward pointing, it's very instinctual. You don't, you just kind of point, point and punch, so to speak. If you're dealing with some kind of wildlife run in that kind of gross motor, you know, adrenaline dump, everything going on right there, that's going to be a really nice thing. And if you're talking to other just basic utility, like making a few cuts, that's not going to get in the way either. Open a pouch, makes a pretty good box uh, opener too. If you're, if we're getting into that realm of things. Check that out. I think there's definitely something to be said for that, for it being one less thing you have to think about in a situation like that. These are fairly lightweight. I actually don't have a weight on the website. Let me see. Let me compare it to the Peacemaker here. It's probably about four or five ounces, somewhere in that range. If you want to go uh, even lighter, there's stuff like the TDI Ladyfinger um, that go a little bit smaller, but I think this one would be a pretty good idea. Um, for a folder option, since you mentioned it, um, and it might just be because I uh, recently featured these in a video, but my mind was going to the Honey Badger knives with the leaf blade. Uh, this is the large version right here, which comes in at you know, $42 with a 3.6 inch blade, but you can go smaller for sure. A little bit of the same thing that's going on with that TDI right there. Not to the same extreme, of course, but you have a little bit of that forward angle with the tip pointed down a little bit. So that can help a bit there. It's a little bit more general purpose utility styled than the aggressive angle too. They're fairly lightweight. HCR 13 MOV steel, which metallurgically is pretty much OS 8. So same thing applies, not the most stainless in the world. So keep that in mind. But the, uh, the FRN handles keep the weight down. Even this large version right here, 3.8 ounces, not too bad for its size. Not ultra light, but you take my meaning. There you go. Check those out if you would. All right, next question comes from JR. Uh, trying to find a carry fixed blade for my picky brother-in-law. He wants something pretty specific. A utilitarian knife for everyday tasks, but that he can carry concealed for self-defense purposes, horizontally in small of back. So I'm gonna have like 
pretty long shirts he generally wears. Um, so probably something with the tech lock. Thing is, he is set on a Tonto. I tried to lead him away from that, or at least open him up to the idea of a non-Tonto blade, but he's determined. He wants something in the four-ish inch range. Under $100 would be best if possible. Nothing wrong with the Tonto. Um, in fact, I, I probably used to be a little more like you, perhaps. I kind of discounted Tontos, and this is years ago at this point, as a, a general utility option until I carried one for a while. I think it was a, a Hoag EX-03 actually that changed my mind on just the daily utility of Tonto blades. That leading edge, there's a lot of uses for that, for scraping, more precision stuff like that, where if you're dealing with something like that has more of a belly, you might not be able to get the same kind of control or same kind of contact you want. I actually grew to be really fond of using the transition point on a Tonto when you don't want to cut too far into something like maybe a taped box that has something fragile underneath. You can use that point, especially with your finger back here, slide right along. Works really nice. It's kind of like one big tooth right there too. It gives an aggressive point if you're cutting through stuff like rope, things like that. Kind of moving back and forth on the actual tip or the, uh, the secondary tip there can do a lot of good things. So don't worry, let, let them carry a Tonto. It's no big deal. Now, when you're looking for something with kind of that four inch range and being concealable, you're kind of fighting uh, kind of two different opposite or two different opposing forces. So I wanted to mention this first, the Cold Steel Mini Tech. Doesn't perfectly fit the specs, but I'll get into that in a second. It's like a $30 knife here. And you've got from tip to scale about a three and a half inch blade. So not four inches and definitely not close to four inches of sharpened edge, but still a good usable blade. And you've got a handle shape here, which is really a three finger grip for most folks, maybe three and a half if you have really small fingers, but it's secure. You've got an aggressive kind of suggestion of a sub hilt here essentially, and a wide thin handle that allows you to hold onto it quite well. Solid solid for self-defense, solid for utility as well. And here's where things get a little tricky too. The sheath is nice, can be carried horizontally, but the whole pattern here is a little bit tricky. Your standard small or large tech locks aren't gonna work on these. You could use something like Civiti's T-Clip, which I'll show you here, which has a slot here in between two of the holes. So that will help you fit kind of this oddly shaped hole spacing you have on the mini tack sheath. But the other thing you're gonna to need to consider is most attachment hardware that attaches the sheath to said T-clip or otherwise is usually a bit thicker in diameter. So you might have to get a little creative again with something like this, unless you wanted to kind of mount uh, your own, you know, you can use paracord to make belt loops and, and slip it on through the belt. You just won't be able to remove the sheath as easily. But I wanted to mention this because if I didn't, people in the comments certainly would give it a mention. And it is certainly a very nice knife. Something a little, maybe a little closer to what you're looking for. You wanted something at that four inch range and you're trying to steer them away from the Tonto. And I'll lean into that a little bit here with the Civivi Tamashi. Yes, this is a Tonto blade, but it's not your typical Western style Tonto that you see on that cold steel. This is more of a, uh, shall we say, authentic Japanese style Tonto. Quote unquote authentic, air quotes there. Don't, don't flame me in the comments again, folks. Uh, 4.07 inch blade D2 tool steel, 6650 right now for this knife. Carries slim enough, the handle is very comfortable. The sheath is Kydex and it comes equipped immediately out of the box with that T-clip, which you can flip around for horizontal carry, small of the back. But you can see what I mean. This is a pretty large package to be carried unobtrusively and uh, hidden at the small of the back position right here. So that's why I wanted to show the, uh, the alternative with that cold steel right here. But this is a very nice knife. If I were doing it in this sort of situation, I'd probably remove the fob here at the back. But yeah, you get a little bit more of a, of a non tonto utility style with this particular blade shape. You've got a little more belly that you might be accustomed to and that might open his eyes a little bit or, or at least broaden his horizons from just what he's thinking about. But if he doesn't like that, don't worry. A regular American style, Western style Tonto is still very, very useful. Hope that still helps. trying to sell David on the reverse Tonto. Never happened. Never gonna happen, Thomas. Never gonna happen. <laughs> we'll see. 
All right, let's get to the lightning round for today. Adam Wilson, how do you get rid of surface scratches on pocket knives? Um, you're, honestly, you're fighting a losing battle if you're trying to remove the scratches that you've put on a knife through use. Wear them proudly. It means you're using your knife. That's a good thing. Because if you really wanted to get rid of them, you have to sand, you know, it's a deeper scratch than the finish. So you have to sand, sand it out, basically. So you have to figure out what kind of grit the original finish is, finish is match it, and sand it back to that. But that gets complicated if you have something like this cold steel we just mentioned, which has a bead blasted finish. Can't sand that away because you're sanding away the bead blasted finish at the same time. It's just kind of one of those facts of life. You're gonna, if you're gonna use your blade, you're gonna put some scratches on it, but that's a good thing. Jim Was Was asked, whatever happened to ceramic blades? Uh, the smart alecky answer is they probably all chipped. <laughs> I do have a, a ceramic blade knife here. This is the Boker Plus Anti-MC. And I believe, actually, they uh, use the ceramic in this particular blade because it is non-magnetic. But the reason it probably hasn't caught on uh, with the broader knife community at large, why it hasn't, uh, or why it was kind of a fad for a little while, they're still out there, is they're not as tough. They can chip a little easier, sometimes a lot easier than most steels. And when they do chip, it's a lot harder to kind of sharpen through them. You gotta use diamond uh, abrasives and it's slow going. Most people are just gonna prefer steel for those and other reasons as well. Nowadays, it's kind of more of a niche thing and more something you can give to folks who don't know how to take care of their knives anyway because it's gonna be sharper than they ever felt a knife before, but then they're probably gonna throw it in the dishwasher and it's gonna chip anyway, so. Not to drag ceramic knives, but just make sure you know what you're getting into when you purchase one. That's what they are. All right, Fred Pye says, uh, disappointed in the steel choice for Kershaw's new hunting knives. Uh, D2 will stain and rust with blood on them. D2 is an okay steel for EDC knives, but for a hunting knife, it's not the best choice. I can respect that. Um, you know, there's always a better steel given any, you know, any one person's criteria. But at the price range, I'd argue D2 is a great choice. I mean, it's certainly well established on hunting knives. You know, folks like Bob Dozier have been using it very successfully. Again, not saying it's necessarily the best, but D2 can actually have some really good advantages, especially on some less expensive knives. This is not a less expensive knife right here. This is the Smith & Sons Honcho. Really awesome D2 bladed hunting knife. But what's nice about D2 for a hunting knife is some of the thing, or one of the things that some folks don't like about it for other scenarios is the large carbides in the steel here can kind of help create a toothy edge when you actually sharpen the knife. And a toothy edge on meat and hide and stuff like that can actually be a lot better than a mirror polished edge because you're, you're grabbing a little bit and aiding in the slice sometimes. So to each their own, I certainly respect it, but I think it's a, it's a pretty good choice, especially at the prices those Kershaw knives were coming in at, you know, 40 to 50 bucks, really solid choice. Just clean them up. Just clean them up, yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, D2 will stain and rust with blood on them. Don't keep blood on them, wipe them off. People have been using carbon steel kitchen knives uh, for eons, which are less stainless than D2 is certainly. I'm not worried about that. All right, which brings us to our final question. Our most serious question of the day, which comes from Derek Wood. Mr. DCA, what knife would you recommend for getting to the chocolate? <laughs> Try that again. What knife would you recommend for getting to the chocolatey center of a Tootsie Pop? So my first thought was, you know, you don't wanna just crunch into it, right? You know, you wanna lick it. So maybe something like the old bear mushroom knife, cause you got the nice brush there on the end. So you can you know, brush away like one, two, but then you're probably gonna get frustrated, at which point I would pick up the tops clipper and crunch, so it'd be a three. Three to, three to the center of the Tootsie Pop. But you might not be able to fit a full size uh, Tootsie Pop through the, uh, the cigar hole on this particular friction folder right here, the little guys. That's why you gotta have those three licks first. You have the, well, it's, it's two licks and then the three. So it's just the two. Well, the world may never know. <laughs> I was thinking Leatherman Crunch, but I couldn't find anyone uh, on, on filming day here, so. But. I was thinking Kershaw Leak. Why, why the leak, Thomas? Because it's really close to lick. Not bad. I respect that. I dig it. 
Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely put tongue in the search bar on Knife Center. It didn't, it didn't bring anything up though. Oh well. Oh well. All right, folks, that's all the questions I have to answer for you today. If you want a chance to have your question featured in a future episode, just drop it in the comments below. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description. That'll take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're at it, because you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next knives when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.